What's good, football fans? Back at you once again with another video. Now, I wanted to come on this morning and talk a little bit about what happened in last night's game. I feel like a lot of the time people get caught up in the moment when their team loses and just instantly think, oh, they're no good and never want to look at the intangibles of why they lost maybe said game against maybe the best team in their conference. First things first, you definitely can say that they were not playing very good complimentary football. You know, the defense came out playing really good, keeping uh, Philadelphia's offense in check. And you can make an argument that says the Philadelphia did the same thing, which is what most quote unquote experts were expecting was that Philadelphia defense would rise to the occasion. Something I have noticed over the last few weeks, ever since Jaden got hurt, it does appear like they've gone super conservative and peeled the offense back. I think that definitely has hurt the chemistry on the team. You know, the offense, you know, trying to gauge if they did well or not, uh, they were 3 of 12 on third down. Quite obviously not good enough. They only gained like 3.3 yards a carry. All of that needs to increase. You know, they got an offensive line that's banged up. I think one of the major intangibles of this game is, is you got Philly coming off of a bye week and Washington still hasn't had one yet. But beyond that, in the fourth quarter, this team was down by two points. And they had a first down on the Philadelphia 34 with 9 minutes and 58 seconds left in the game. And the reason I point that out is just a handful of plays later and, you know, they're down 26 to 10. That said, let's just hop right into this film I want to take a look at. And we'll start with this first down play to Bates. And this play went just as every one of us watching right now wanted it to. You know, maybe they could have gotten the first down and it could have went just a tiny bit better. But yeah, they got nine yards. You figure, hey, they're set up for second down. You know, this is the position we wanted to be in down two points late in the fourth quarter. And it's at this point right here where the offense gets ultra conservative. Now, I can't point to one part of Philly's defense and say, hey, that's the weak spot because they have some good players on that defensive front. But what I can do is point at one in particular and say, don't run at that guy. And in effect, even though the play wasn't designed that way, B-Rob ran right at the wrong guy who has the wrong guy blocking him. Now, don't get me wrong. Andrew Wiley and pass protection might be something we could have a decent conversation about. But Andrew Wiley and run protection against Jalen Carter is never going to work. This will almost certainly, nine times out of ten, always equal a nightmare scenario for us. Thankfully, it wasn't a quarterback that he was coming after right there. B-Rob could take a hit. He did. And officially, I believe this goes down as no gain whatsoever on this play. But as you see, Carter steps in, stops the forward progress, and it becomes a gang tackle right here. So second down and one gave us some options. You know, maybe you don't view that as a poor play call. Maybe you don't view that as too conservative. But on third and one, they turned around and they didn't run the exact same play, but they ran it right back up the gut again. And Philly was standing there with that same great defensive front that they stopped on the play before, ready to stop them again. And that's exactly what they did. And this time, they not only stopped them, they made them lose a yard in the process. So now what was once first and 10 from the Philly 34 with nine minutes and 58 seconds to go down two points is now fourth and two from the Philadelphia 26 with eight minutes to go and an offense that has all of a sudden gone completely conservative and been stopped two times in a row up the middle. Now I'm a little unsure what the play call was next. I do believe that he would have had an option here maybe to hand off to B-Rob or, or whatever the case may be something that i did not see uh, on the original broadcast angle that they showed when the ball was hiked uh, there was something wrong with the exchange there daniels bobbled it and by the time that he gets that bobble under control he then makes contact with a pulling sam cosme who then makes contact with brandon coleman as he's coming across and the whole play starts to look like a wash now in this process cosme in effect and coleman in effect let carter through and it's definitely a nightmare situation right here and carter just barely misses him as you can see this could have very easily been a sack right here and, and, and a loss of several yards on this play right here but Jaden is able to be light on his feet there go backward a little bit and the play just kind of implodes from that point 
Now, as you see, Biotish gets out ahead of the play right here. It's part of the confusion right here that allows Carter to, to, to basically go on block. But Biotish gets out in front of the play, and he has 53 right there held up in a block. But 53 is constantly kind of stretched out to the left, and he loses control of his block. That's the first thing that goes wrong on this play right here. The second thing, Noah Brown takes a bad angle, the wrong or the wrong angle, I should say, and completely whips trying to guard 32 right there. So basically, that leaves 53 and 32 inbound on our quarterback. And with Slay already covering the edge, there was nowhere for Jaden to go. I get it that everything's about execution. I get it that the coaches, you know, they can't go out there and do the plays for them. But you're not really putting them in a position to do really well with this kind of play calling. Not when you're going up against that particular defensive line. And the offense was moving the ball down the field pretty well at that point before they started getting conservative. My guess is that they were trying to kill the clock a little bit there and stretch the game out. And in the process, they killed the drive. But if you watch the playback in real time, you know, this play was just, just screwed from the beginning right here. He tries to make something out of it. There's just nothing there. You know, Philadelphia didn't take very long to score, and they got back on the field, and the very first play, Jaden tried to force the pass right here to Noah Brown, and, you know, the Eagles made a good play on the ball itself, picked it off, and, you know, just a couple plays later, they were up by 16. Anytime you go from having the ball first and 10 on the opponent's 34, down by two, and just, you know, five minutes later in the game, you're down by 16. Anytime you do that, yeah, that's a massive failure. This team needs to take this little mini buy, this next little 10 days off, and regroup. They need to get back to what they were doing earlier in the year. I realize that this might be the longest stretch of football that Jaden Daniels has ever played, but they need to get back to what they were doing earlier in the season and get this kid comfortable again. At the same time, they need to keep doing everything they can to work Terry McLaurin into the passing attack. Terry was only targeted twice the entire night, and the only catch he made was literally on the play before the first down play that I showed first in this, in this set of clips here. He caught one pass for 10 yards. You got to know that you're never going to win many games if you don't involve your best target. Now, obviously, the Eagles were trying to do things to him, but I didn't see a whole lot of double teams going on. So, you know, to me, it's just poor game planning and, and poor play calling. And I know there's a little bit of a debate amongst Washington fans on if they should have kicked the field goal or if they should have, you know, should have gone for it like they did. And while I'm a little undecided on what they should have done there, you have to keep in mind, if they kick the field goal, it's 13 to 12, you know, and they give Philadelphia the ball back with eight minutes to go. You know, in reality, they went for it and Philadelphia scored pretty quick. I believe it was less than 20 seconds later. So if you had kicked the field goal, it wouldn't have ended the game anyway. It would have given them the ball back. They probably would have handled the game a little differently there too, you know, being down a point versus being up two. But no matter... They still scored a touchdown. And then by the time Washington got the ball back, they were down nine points. And then they had to just start trying to, to do things and stretch the field a little bit. And Philadelphia was just able to do what they wanted at that point. So I'm not so sure kicking the field goal would have been the right move either. It definitely would have been the easy move. It would have been the safe move. I think Dan Quinn has proved that he's not scared to go for it on fourth down, which leaves him open to criticism, you know, no matter what. But anyway, let me know what your opinion is down below. And the team will get you know a little nine, 10 day window now to rest up before they play what I'm gonna view as a get right game against the Cowboys at home. And, and, and it becomes a must win with this loss. Actually, they're all must wins at this point, but it's definitely now became a must, must win for this team if they wanna to continue to compete in the NFC East. You know, as far as that's concerned, they need to move on past this game, put it behind them. They play the Eagles again in a few weeks. They'll be able to try to redeem themselves at home against this team as well. Obviously, losing to Philadelphia now puts the Eagles in the driver's seat as far as the division goes. It's still too early to talk about the playoffs, but definitely if they want to be part of the playoffs, they're just they're going to have to pick up the execution and start doing more with it. Obviously, this is the meat of the schedule. Obviously, these are the defenses that are going to play the team the toughest this year. 
Pittsburgh, Philly. They're a young team with a, a coaching staff that's still trying to get everything together. And they're still an organization, a franchise that's still trying to get the structure all like they want it right now. They're still trying to get this kit put together. You know what I mean? It's still in construction mode. And I like what I see so far. And it's kind of easy to get down on them losing like this because, hey, we want to continue to get better and to win each week. As fans, we should always demand more from our team. But at the same time, stop and look at what they've accomplished so far, but keep an eye on what they need to do to get better. It's frustrating to watch a team that's trying to put it all together and get it right, especially when you've gone through as much as we have over the years. Nobody expected this team to win more than four games this year. The experts had us winning four games off of this schedule. In my opinion, we're playing with house money and we're looking to shut everybody up at this point. Just remember, not everything could be perfect in the process. They still need pieces. Wait till they get Lattimore back and then things should really start looking better on that defensive side of the ball. Y'all take it easy. Peace.